Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to this episode of Cheap vs. Expensive. I'm Jimbo, your host. Thanks for tuning in. Today on the Cheap vs. Expensive, we're gonna be dealing with Gion Can Coat. That runs about $55 on Amazon versus the Sonax Profiline Polymer Net Shield, which is gonna run you about $25. Now, I know that on both ends of the spectrum there are cheaper products and there are more expensive products, but I thought for the sake of this video, even though I've compared both of these individually to Meguiar's Fast Finish, I thought it would make for a really nice video to do both of these together. Now, Gion Can Coat, as described in the other video, uh, is non-aerosol. Um, it comes with a can, it comes in this fancy packaging, also comes with the microfiber towel. At SEMA 2018, they released a Can Coat 2.0, I guess you could call it, uh, which I don't have my hands on yet. Um, it, it boasts that it's hydrophobic, super easy. Also says that it's a glass coating. Um, uh, da, 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 durability glass beading has like stars that it gives it. Comes in a very nice uh, box. Uh, on the flip side, and that was $55. On the flip side, we have the Sonax Polymer Net Shield, a favorite among a lot of people. Um, and what will be interesting to see is the, the Polymer Net Shield, when I compared it to the Meguiar's Fast Finish, was a little tacky underneath the towel. So I will, and then on the flip side though, the Gion Can Coat had these incredibly big beads that was really cool to see that I really haven't seen in any other product. So we have one product and then another product that is double the price. Let's get it on the hood, beat it up some, with some product, and go from there. See which one will hold up. See which one is a better value for you as the end consumer. The line on your left side of the screen, um, and so we're actually going to apply it with a applicator that I get over here. And I love these double-sided applicators. You could actually, I actually sell them. I love them so much that uh, I started selling them as well. So you can check these out. These are the double-sided auto fiber ones. So I'm going to do the Profiline on your left side, can coat on the right with nothing in the middle and to help with cross-contamination. I'm going to throw a dreadnought towel down right there. So we'll do the can coat with their specific towel. The profiline we'll do on this side. So I'm going to spray it on an applicator. In fact, let me whip this thing around so I could see what I'm doing here. All right, so on this side, we're going to do the profiline. I'll spray it on an applicator. Again, it foams up, right? And then I will apply it being very careful not to apply too much product. Again, tacky underneath your hand, which is fine. Apply a nice even coat right there, and I don't believe that it says to uh, wait any certain amount of time or anything like that, so I think we could wipe it off right away. This panel has been cleaned um, and also free of any contaminants. It's been stripped and washed with a bunch of harsh cleaners. So I'm gonna let that set up. Again, when I guess the Sonax would be an aerosol, the can coat goes to great lengths to say that it's not an aerosol. Not really sure how important that is. Maybe I waited a little too long to wipe off that Sonax Profiline. It is a little bit harder. I thought I had some more give. So you almost do want to wipe it off right away which I will do with the can coat. A little tacky underneath the towel, but that's kind of expected because I did wait a little too long. Makes the panel look shiny, and as you wipe, it does get a little bit smoother. I will, I will admit, it does get smoother as you let it, as you wipe it and remove it all. So, all right, I think I got that removed right there. Let me put this down over here. Drag my towel over. Actually, to right there. Get out my fancy box and their fancy towel. Right, so as I bounce to the other side, I had to clean out my sprayer because it does harden. I will do a couple sprays on the towel. I'm not going to spray it directly on the panel. You can see it, that's a nice even coverage right there. You can see it. And it does almost evaporate right away. It smells so bad. So I'm gonna do that and then I'm gonna take a towel and I'm gonna wipe it off right away. Can coat, new towel. 
very tacky underneath the towel, which is, again, why I really don't like either one of these products. They're just super tacky. So, All right, time for some fun. Let's beat it up a little bit, huh? All right, I think everyone's gonna actually laugh at me because I uh, <clears throat> I recorded this whole video, so this is the second part as you watch it, but I recorded this whole video and then realized that CanCoat had a 24-hour cure time. Seven days to full cure, as they say, and uh, I didn't wait that long. I had only waited a few minutes, so I ended up stripping it and then reapplying it. So it's been about four days in between this first half of this segment and uh, right now. So here's what it looks like raw or straight from the, the hose rather. Okay. And what I'm going to do, so we have the can coat on the right side, the Sonax on your left side, in the middle we have bare clear coat. So we could see, and I think this is important, say what's up to the dog. I think this is important to note that with the bare clear coat, we're still going to get some water behavior, right? So you could see right there in the middle, there is... Um, some water beading or just some water behavior, right? But it's not the nice round beads that we see on both sides. And as I look at this, and a little bit of water sheeting, but for the most part, water beading, right? So I think we're gonna be able to tell when the product has broken down by the um, behavior of the water beads, right? And also as we spray like the degreaser or the, uh, when, like when we spray the degreaser or something on it, how it kind of, how, it, it's almost like I could, you could start to see and start to tell and hopefully you guys can start to see this as well. Like it almost looks like the sealants try to fight off the chemical, right? It's, so it's almost like it's drying out the chemical to a point where you can, it's drying off. Anyway, so the first order of business I want to do is I want to spray Adam's iron remover on it. And the reason why I want to do this first, let me change this. Oh, you know what? First order of business before we even get into that. Look at this. I'm going to wear gloves in this video because you guys have been recommending it. And I think you're right. So, let me put on some gloves. Also, these all-purpose cleaners and heavy cleaners dry out my hands really bad. So, uh, the reason why I want to do an iron remover is because I think this is the most common thing that people are using on their rims, especially as maintenance. And so, I don't know. I'm just interested to see if it breaks down, if it breaks down anything. So, I'm also going to pre-wet a towel here to see if uh, so I could wipe it because I think that's that's kind of the best route um, the best route instead of a waterless wash or I just don't want anything to interfere with it so I think my best bet is just a wet rag so have that wet rag ready I'm going to rub this on a little bit and so what I'm talking about with the degreaser and stuff I don't see with the iron remover it doesn't look like the sealant is actively trying to break that down but we do have it on there and again on your left side we have the Sonax I forget what it's even called now it's been a few days and the can coat on the right your right so let's wash that iron remover off see if we've made any so you can see there's still plenty of residue on the surface. Let me try to clean that off as best as possible. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, and then I'm gonna hit it with a wet rag as well, and then do the water test again. So what you're seeing here, I think I got all the residue off, but let me hit it with a wet rag. I'm gonna hit it with a wet rag. Are you still with me? Hit it with a wet rag. As you could see, actually though, right now, that's very interesting. Look at the dramatic difference. K 
hand coat still beading and still has those very nice round beads. Bare clear coat is staying very wet. Sonax is that water behavior is completely gone. It's actually gone to sheeting instead of beading. Similar to the middle, right? But that's that's a very interesting comparison to note because iron removers, we are all pretty much spraying those on our rims. So that is floating up to the clear coat. Very interesting that there was such a dramatic difference and I'm glad I waited these few days um, because that was a very, very, very big difference. So, all right, wet rag to, again, the whole purpose of the wet rag is just to really remove all the residue. And then I'm gonna dry it from here. And then we will do the, this may be the, like the quickest, cheap versus expensive. Again, we have the $25, about 60 bucks, 56, something like that. I may be off a few dollars. And to be honest, I'm using Amazon to judge my pricing, which could change rapidly. So, okay. So I think I got the iron residue off pretty well. Let me borrow this real quick. Got a sprung a leak in my hose. All right, let's do the water test. Okay, so look at how that stands as of right now. Whereas before we had, remember I talked about the water behavior. What is the water doing? And I don't think we've ever seen this dramatic of a difference. Usually when it breaks down, all the product, the, the sealant is gone. We have can coat holding up strong, looks pretty much as it did. The Sonax is gone. It's looking very identical to the middle of the panel, which is bare clear coat. So again, let me dry this off now. So I'd venture to say that Canco, or excuse me, Sonax has, is gone. So very interesting, an iron remover just removed that Sonax. I don't think an iron remover would have removed McGuire's fast finish, but Canco still holding strong, which is good. I like to see that, especially yeah, I got that nasty email from Gion and they think I hate their product. I don't hate their product. I'm just doing videos, man. All right, so now the real test. So I think that's actually a very, very fair to use an iron remover and that's why I wanted to bring it in. Let's switch over to the super clean, which I'm running low of, and see if this is a killer, a sealant killer. So again, I the reason why I didn't wait seven days on the, uh, whew, took a little super clean to the throat there. Uh, the reason why I didn't wait seven days on the can coat was when I did that other video and I did can coat versus, um, <coughs> excuse me, against fast finish and waited the seven days. I really didn't see any difference between waiting 24 hours and waiting seven days. So now I decided to kind of meet it in the middle. How about that? So I waited, I waited, let's see, I did that Friday, Saturday, Sunday, today is Monday. So, you know, call it three days right in there. So, all right, there's that. Let me rinse off. Try to get the residue rinsed really good. And, and I really honestly am trying to make these videos as best as possible. So, I've got a little leak here on my hose. Okay. So this, thank you for the idea with the nozzle head. It has made it quite a bit easier to get that residue off and you can really, really see it there. And you can see how flat that panel is looking right now on both sides. So, but again, let me, while it's wet, let me get my wet rag out. It looks completely flat across the board, but we could still have some residue that I'm unaware of. So let me wet rag it, get it all off and see where we're at now. My tape is just taking a beating. I'll tell you what I should do a cheap versus expensive on is that Jimbo tape is a champ. Tell you what, 
Good luck to all those people ordering from JimboDaily.com getting that box open. This blue painter's tape is just taking a beating and that Jimbo tape held on for quite a few videos. All right, now let me dry that off. Another champ is this towel. So there we go. Let's do a water test, water behavior test, I guess. And again, I'm not convinced that water behavior is a good indicator of protection, but it's kind of the only one we got. So let's see where we're at now. Bring this out a little bit. Looks like a uh, can coach trying to hold on right where I got the water over there. But as you can see, it's taken, it's, that's gone. I mean, maybe hanging on a little bit over there, but for the most part, when I'm looking at these tests, I'm looking right here, right? Like middle of the panel, not necessarily looking at like the fringe parts of it. And as you can see right there, that water behavior is completely different. There's no residue left. Just for fun, let's hit it with another all-purpose cleaner. Hey, bud. <laughs> nice. <laughs> cool, bud. Nice. <laughs> and wreck it, Ralph. <laughs> oh, the fixing guy said that. The beauty of doing videos at home. Oh yeah. Nice. Uh huh. Uh huh. Whoa! That's crazy. That's awesome, bud. All right, so let me do this. We'll get all the residue off of here, see where we're at. So you could see kind of the white residue hanging on there, so that's why I'm kind of doing these water, trying to get all the water off, but I think we pretty much killed it with that initial all-purpose cleaner. But you guys be the judge. You be the judge here. Let me hit it with my wet, my wet towel. So with the Sonax, that's a little disappointing and you wanna be careful now when you're using an iron remover. But again, it comes back and, and it's good to see a lot of these companies recommend you know, a drying aid, AKA a wax, a topper. You know, all those products, is it, is it really a topper? Is it really rejuvenating the coating? Or is it just you're getting the effects from that? I don't know, it really matters. Again, it kind of plays into my thesis as well is of just always wax your car. Coatings, coatings will stand up to this and I do have a coating video coming where we're gonna test some coatings and I actually bought a uh, truck, uh, a truck uh, tailgate and so we're going to be applying some coatings to the tailgate and then that'll help give some reoccurring videos as well, monthly updates, stuff like that. That way I don't have to constantly be finding new products. So, all right, so that's the second APC. Let's see if it can stand it. Again, I think most coatings will stand up to this. And let's see where we're at. And this will conclude kind of this test. Let's see here. All right. So there you go. So a little bit, it's gonna get y'all wet, brother. So for the most part, the water is flat. So um, yeah, try it over here, bud. 
So as you can see on that right side of the panel, it's leaking pretty bad though, but you can try it. So it is flat, completely gone. The water is sheeted off on the, the uh, Sonex side as well as the can coat side. Looks identical to the middle. Therefore, I think it's, it's safe to conclude that we've completely stripped that. So even after three days of waiting, completely gone. I think the most important interesting thing to, to know is that the iron remover removed the Sonax and that's crazy to think about so be careful with the iron removers on your paint. Wax often. Hope you guys enjoyed that video. Let me know um, what products you'd like to see in a cheap versus expensive. Like, subscribe, and comment. Oh go check inside. I'm not sure. And I will catch you guys on the next episode. Hope you guys enjoyed that one. See ya.